The Shadow Strikes, directed by Lynn Shores and released by Grand National Pictures in 1937. I'm Andrew Olson, welcome to a Classic Cinema Review. Rod LaRocque stars as amateur criminologist Lamont Cranston, who is out prowling as his crime-fighting alter ego, The Shadow. The Shadow stops the robbery of attorney Chester Randall's office. When the police arrive, he ditches his famous hat and cloak and disguises himself as the attorney himself. While still posing as the attorney, he receives a phone call from Caleb Delthorn, who requires the, the presence of the attorney at his home immediately. Upon arrival at Caleb's manor, Cranston learns that he requires that Caleb Delthorn requires his last will and testament to be updated immediately. He fears his life may be in danger. Cranston also learns that one half of Caleb Delthorn's fast fortune is, is to go to the eldest surviving heir. The other 50% is to be divided evenly among the remaining heirs. Rather interesting. The heirs include the eldest and rather eccentric Winston Comstock, Humphrey Comstock, the second uh, in line, the lovely niece or his lovely niece Marcia Delthorn, who incidentally will be disinherited if she marries her boyfriend Warren Berenger, and the youngest nephew Jasper Delthorn, who is rather deeply indebted to the wrong people due to a um, a bad gambling habit. The, uh, the interview between Delthorne and Cranston is cut rather short. When Delthorne is murdered, shot dead through the window of his own study, right in front of Lamont Cranston. This leaves Cranston as uh, really the only one who can solve the crime. This is a um, this is not a bad movie, but it's not a great movie. This is the uh, sort of the epitome of a uh, 1930s B movie, if you will, in terms of quality. The uh, the story is based off of the Shadow magazine, written by Walter B. Gibson, uh, or the at least it's a uh, story written by Walter B. Gibson, called. So I've got it here. The Ghost of the Manor, and if you saw my Shadow unboxing video. Here's the cover to that original. And there are two stories in this one, of course. The, um, the movie takes most of the characters from the magazine and uh, integrates them into the story. The story itself is a straightforward whodunit murder mystery. Um, like I said, it's not a bad plot, but the script is a bit uninspiring which is unfortunate. I think they, uh, they didn't have the best writers for this particular movie. Um, the other thing that's really missing is the sort of shadow, shadowy mystery, uh, um, the, the atmosphere which you get from the Pulp Fiction magazines is missing from this movie. There's a little bit more humor, uh, which is not a bad thing, but there's really there's really nothing to kind of sink your teeth into. Uh, this is, of course, a shadow uh, story, a shadow mystery, and um, for him to be the title character, you, we see a lot more of Lamont Cranston than we do of his alter ego, the Shadow, which is unfortunate. Uh, the characters are um, they're okay. The actors play them all right, I suppose. Um, Rod LaRocque, who plays Lamont Cranston, is probably one of the best in the film. Um, we've got Lynn Anders, who plays Marcia Delthorn. She also does a, a decent job at portraying her character. And of course, uh, Lamont Cranston's uh, butler, uh, who was also sort of his uh, partner in crime fighting, if you will, uh, played by Norman Ainsley. Uh, the name of the butler is uh, Hendrix in the movie. It's Richards in the uh, the magazine. There really was no reason to change that, but I digress. Uh, those three actors probably did the best performances in the movie and uh, have the most screen time.
But everybody else, uh, it, it, for an uninspiring script, everybody did what they could, I would say. Uh, the real problem here is with the direction. There's uh, not a lot of atmosphere, as I said. Everything is put together more or less straightforward. This movie would be considered uh, a cheapy, I think. Uh, that was probably the term uh, used back then, I believe. The budget shows or the lack of budget shows. It's, um, for, for a story that takes place in a big old mansion that was supposed to be uh, haunted in the, uh, in the Pulp Fiction magazine, this lacks that subgenre. This is not a haunted house murder mystery. It's just a straight on murder mystery. Uh, it's a lot more simplified, if you will. And the direction, the, the director, there's nothing really um, top-notch about the direction. Everything is cut together and the story is told uh, fairly straightforward, if you will, but uh, there really isn't a whole lot of stylistic uh, elements to this film. Uh, Walter McGrail plays Winston Comstock. James Blakely plays Jasper Delthorne. Bill Kellogg is... Humphrey Comstock, and uh, we have Cy Kendall as Brose, who is uh, sort of a gambling mob boss kind of a character, and Kenneth Harlan as Captain Breen, who is the, the police captain. And then we have uh, John Carnival as Warren Berenger. If you're looking for something that's uh, entertaining but not expensive, as this movie was uh, very obviously intended, um, at least I'm assuming it was intended to be rather cheap entertainment, uh, this movie clocks in at just one hour. I think it's an hour and a minute. So uh, if you're looking for just something to pass an hour, uh, something that's mildly entertaining, I think this one will uh, will work out for you. It's, uh, it's a murder mystery. It's a B-movie. And uh, it's it's got the shadow in it. Uh, for that historical point, this was the very first full-length film that The Shadow ever appeared in. So if you're a fan of The Shadow, this might be worth a look just for the historical aspect of it. There isn't a whole lot to delve into here. I don't want to give uh, too much of the plot away, so I won't say anything more about that. Um, I'm going to give it a two and a half out of five star rating. I was entertained by it. Uh, it was an entertaining movie, but there are a lot of key points about the film that unfortunately just didn't quite make uh, the grade here. Uh, it certainly doesn't live up to the Pulp Fiction magazine that uh, it was inspired by. So uh, there is that. Thank you all for watching. This has been another Classic Cinema Review. I will be back with more Classic Cinema Reviews in the near future. Please hit that like button if you found it helpful, uh, informative, or enjoyable. Hit that subscribe button for more reviews coming in the near future. And of course, until the next review, I look forward to seeing you all next time. Oh, hold up. Can't go quite yet. I gotta say thank you to Jerry at DrMacro.com. Jerry really came through for me this time. I needed some posters and images for this review and um, couldn't find quite what I was looking for. And Jerry had some that were not uploaded to his website, but he cleaned them up and stuck them on his website and allowed me to use them. So I got to say thank you, Jerry, very much. Uh, you, really made, uh, you really made my day. Uh, I will leave a link to Jerry's website in the description below. I'll also link the page where you can find those posters. Uh, if you're interested in viewing them for yourself full size. So thank you once again, Jerry, and thank you all for watching. I'll be back soon with my next review.